Tundaminar Lagoon is one of the three lagoons situated in the northernmost part of Sri Lanka. This lagoon is very rich in biodiversity. But as you can see, this lagoon is being tampered by human interventions for the past 50 years or more. The Tundamanaru Barrage, which is a hot topic of debate in the recent times, is a barrage that is situated just 800 meters from the mouth of the lagoon. It was constructed in 1950s as a part of the River for Jaffna project, which prime objective was to convert this whole lagoon into a freshwater reservoir. Due to the lack of maintenance, this barrage has developed several leaks. As a result, the River for Jaffna project has failed. Now, this barrage blocks the free flow of water into and out of the lagoon. Because of this, millions of fish died off in April 2014 as the trapped lagoon water evaporated in dry season causing an abrupt rise in salinity of the lagoon. As you can see in this map, several major roads have been constructed across this lagoon. Several bridges also have been constructed and this tempers the free flow of water across the lagoon. The mangrove trees are cut as firewoods and reckless disposal of garbage also causes heavy pollution in the lagoon. For the past 35 years, due to the prolonged war, no studies have been conducted regarding this lagoon. Therefore, it was necessary to conduct a baseline analysis to update the physical, chemical, biological and socio-economical data in order to assist the authorities in decision making. In July 2014, a one-year project financed by Mangroves for the Future was started by a research team from Department of Zoology, University of Jaffna. It was titled Baseline Analysis of Developmental Opportunities to Tondamanaru Lagoon. Dr. T. Iswar Mohan was our principal investigator, while our co-investigators were Dr. R. Janeswaran and Mrs. P. Sivakumar. We conducted field trips to various parts of the lagoon during various seasons of the year and we collected physical and chemical parameters. We also collected specimens of various species and analyzed them in laboratory to process this data and compile respective databases. In addition to that, we have also prepared 5 20 minute long documentary films. The third volume of these documentary films contains details about plant species found in different parts of the lagoon. We have recorded the distribution of different species of mangroves in different different locations through the field trips. Not just mangroves, we have also observed and recorded different types of other plant species in these locations. We also published this data in newspapers for the general public. Also, we prepared a field guide in English, Tamil and singular languages and distributed copies to the public. The fourth volume of the documentary films speaks about the foreign and local birds 
often the Menara Lagoon. Literally, millions of migratory birds visit this lagoon area every year. We should treat them as a visitor. They are the foreign visitors to our region. We should respect and we have to give much more support as much as possible. We recorded a catalog their details through our field trips. Not only that, we also conducted a training program for tour guides to encourage bird watching with the help of our resource persons. We gathered our socio-economical data through questionnaires. We held workshops for the public and the authorities and conducted open discussion to gather their views about this lagoon. By analyzing our socio-economic data, we formulated a feasible strategic plan by considering the public opinion and presented this plan to the authorities and recorded their responses. These discussions and responses are found in full detail in the documentary films. The mango, 